Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Wrestling Underground Podcast. I am your host, as always, Chad Porto, and joining me is the glorious one himself, Marcus Green. Marcus, how the heck are you? Can't complain, man. Can't complain. We uh, pushed things back a week because we needed to make sure of some things, and uh, so we weren't jumping any guns, and uh, wanted to survey a little land, and uh, now we are post no surrender, so we do the TNA checking. It really felt like something was going to happen. Yeah. Um. And and I'm not by any means disappointed that uh, something didn't happen. Um, truthfully, you know, that I want the company to succeed. I'm worried that. Um, I'm worried that the backlash might be significant enough. But I am hopeful that they make enough moves that people realize that this is not just a, a, a cash center, so to speak. I, I know Demore loved the promotion a lot, and I don't think anyone who takes over his place will love it as well. Or as much, I should say. Uh, I do believe that there is good intentions, at least I hope, with the new regime, um, we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll touch on it now. Uh, the current rumor is that they may not be touring as much going forward, but that's because they feel the better option is to go live. And while I do enjoy the touring of it all, I think live is so much more important for them as a brand because then you can do far more with regards to debuts and such. Uh, and hype up uh, events a little bit more with live as opposed to it being taped because when it's taped it kind of has you know spoilers come out you know uh, opinions on those spoilers come out it it doesn't always hit like it should so I think having it go live I think is the better alternative than touring but touring and going live I think is the goal and. Um, there's a part of me that hopes Demore does find a way to purchase the company because I feel like that would be something he would do is both take it live and tour. Um, would you prefer tours over going live? Well, to your point, I would prefer the trio of having Scott back involved touring and live. I think they need to capitalize and uh, off the, the momentum that they built up and then throw a every possible functional iron in the fire while they can uh because it's hot you know uh but specifically you know um hoping they didn't they didn't make a that anthem didn't make a short-term decision that causes a long-term problem that they can't necessarily uh account for down the line um you know i think they may have potentially underestimated just how much morale was staked in you know, Scott's uh, family-like uh, relation to, to everybody on that roster. And, you know, the beautiful thing about what happened was, even with the the shock that's still sitting in from, from the decision that got made to let him go, was just to see that, that roster camaraderie. Uh, camaraderie, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That, that letter was well, very well-worded and... Uh, yeah, it was just really cool to see because obviously we, we've seen a lot of things happen in the business and people be on one page and on the other. And we've certainly seen a lot of division with past regimes when certain people that came in was on one type of time and, and everybody didn't necessarily agree with it, but they had to go along to kind of get along and things kind of fell by the wayside. So it was beautiful to see that unity, uh, particularly around Scott, who done a tremendous amount for the company and put a lot of that was responsible for a lot of the charge that was in the battery that got put in leading to the rebrand back to TNA. So um, I would just hope, looking at everything, that that Anthem takes that letter serious and, and keeps the lines of communication open and, and finds some way to ingratiate the, the roster in a way that, that allows them to have some type of fundamental belief that they are well-intended, as you said, to you know, keep things afloat and, and, and build upon it and positive momentum going forward because what you don't want to do is get a letter like that uh, 
coming off of that type of decision and like throw it to the wayside and little brother and entire roster that have busted their ass to get the brand back the way it is that it's even functional in a positive way right now so yeah you know ultimately back to your point of i i'd like to see all three you know it's, it's been years since we've seen it live um i remember <laughs> I remember me and you, like, the only reason why we were still happy they was in Orlando was because of a certain beautiful young lady that was ringside. <laughs> but we come a long way since then, and they, they need to they need to put some steam in that train. You know, and they, I think they, they need to tour. They need to, you know, hit some of these bigger cities, bigger venues, uh, keep up this momentum, bring in names, uh, stop all this damn casual dating, as we've been calling for, and, uh, you know, really hit the stick in the ground and, and keep running. The growth of the promotion is the primary focus. I don't care if it's under Demore. I am not, you know, I'm not anti Demore. I'm not a Demore guy, though. Like, I think people get too caught up in Demore was the face of the promotion. He wasn't. Like, this promotion is 22 years old. He wasn't the face of it for 18 years. He wasn't involved with it outside of, you know, four years. You know, eight years total, I guess. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Like, yeah. there's been whole decades that didn't involve Tamor. There's been whole regimes and, and, you know, years upon years that didn't involve Tamor. This company can survive not having Tamor. I, I, I'm not worried about that. My concern is that other people are too Tamor-centric with this, and I think that's the wrong way to go. Uh, it was never his promotion. If it is one day, cool. If it isn't, cool. But I, I am not going to abandon the ship, so to speak, because the is gone. Now, yeah. we'll see what happens next. Um, let's uh, let's talk about No Surrender. I don't know if you saw No Surrender, Marcus. Yeah, so, yeah, highlights. Yeah. Uh, overall, I would say it was a solid show, especially considering all the concerns involving, um, you know how would the uh, the roster would respond? How would everyone uh, react? Would there be an exodus? A lot of people were talking about like this could be the next uh, All Japan nineteen ninety nine when everyone left uh, and formed Noah. Unless that might still end up being the case, I don't know. Uh, the current word is that uh, Dreamer and Gail Kim and Eric Young have essentially taken up the reins of leadership. Uh, alongside with the new executives. Apparently, the new executives are making a good impression, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, there was only one talent, reportedly, who was going to consider asking for their release, but after meeting everyone, uh, they apparently decided to refrain from that. Um, I think all in all, things look all right. Uh, as far as the show goes, I would say it was a C-grade Nothing on it really stood out, but it wasn't bad wrestling. Um, there's a lot of things I would do a bit differently. Most of all being the thanks for signing, here's your title of it all with Mustafa Ali. Uh, he defeated Chris Saban, and while no report on Saban having a concussion came out, he sure shit looked like he had one after that corner spot. Um, I would have to imagine very much that uh, he... Uh, He's not doing all right physically. Um, that being said, what's your thoughts on Mustafa Ali winning the X Division title? It's it's, it's interesting because it, I feel like you called this like like a few shows back, almost like it was taped. Um, and I'm I'm guessing that you know because looking where things were leading and heading, and just based off past history, with like I said, with this casual dating style that they've had. It's also interesting with this whole Mustafa Ali coming in and winning thing, because isn't that Kaz's current gripe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what he was like, hey, man, I'm, a, I'm damn near in the original. I didn't get a title when I came back and signed. Um, which is hilariously ironic. Um, but, yeah, we'll see, you know. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, really hoping Saban's okay. After the last time I remember him having a concussion, and this is – Again, for those listening, how long we've been watching, particularly me, the last time he had a concussion, got one on screen, he was still dating Vail, uh, Velvet Sky. Uh, I remember this because uh, the, the, the folks was like, uh, when you go home with him, don't let him go to sleep, which we know is, you know, a thing when you get concussed. So 
that was uh, years ago. And I don't know if it's happened since. If it has, I don't know. If we, I don't think we know about it. But yeah, um, hopefully this is is man. It's just interesting because I don't think either one of us wanted the guns. The the this whole you know year the guns thing to come to an end the way that it did as soon as it did. Uh, and hopefully they got some good storyline back in this, and they can do something more long term with Ali. Uh, but yeah, because this will be the second time he got caught by a new a new person coming in, coming off of Leo Rush as well. So um, we'll we'll see how it goes with this Mustafa. I'm more high on him than you, but I'm not so high on him that I wanted him to beat Saban. So. They're definitely of the mindset that he should be front and center. Like you don't main event a show with a guy if you're not behind him, and and you don't put the belt on him. Breaking decades, yes, decades worth of traditions of new guys never winning the X division title on their first shot, and, and put the belt on Mustafa without having belief in him long term. I would be flabbergasted if he was done and out in seven months like Trinity. That being said. He's got to do more with this gimmick. He has to get more mic time. Maybe he can turn me. Like, I, I've been convinced before that guys are worth more than they get. You know, I don't see it with Mustafa or uh, Mustafa. Uh, I don't mean to mispronounce his name. Um, I, I, I don't see it with Mustafa, but it, he might be that good. I don't see it. As a wrestler, he's certainly nothing dynamic. You know, you think about guys who stand out above the crowd and who showed up and didn't win that belt first try, Jeff Hardy. Speak straight, springs to mind. He never won that belt. Um, so when you think about, you know, the list of names that he leapfrogged, like, you better, you better be able to turn him into the star you think he can be. Otherwise, what the hell are we doing? Um... And he wasn't the only TNA guy to win a title over the last week, and that made no sense in the eyes of many, because apparently uh, Nick Nemeth won one in New Japan, winning the Global Championship, or whatever it's called. Uh, do you, are you surprised about the success of these XWW guys, Marcus? No, not really. I mean, I've, you know, uh, Nemeth's always been... Uh, extremely talented and, and now he's getting a short on a, a far more uh broad scale in terms of creativity because he then the shackles is off the shackles is off the, the stink of years and years of losing matches uh, are kind of kind of over with in terms of leaving that that the ziggler character behind so now he's kind of hit the ground running and, and he's definitely somebody that's you know reliable and dependable and even that I think he's almost 40, uh, I would imagine. He it feels like he's in his prime, hella great shape, and, and somebody that I think is dependable. So, uh, um, Gates kind of wide open. He's kind of all over the place. Uh, a certain specific back and forth between uh, TNA and New Japan, and which really is... Not, not, that, not that surprising. They trying to... You know, New Japan stateside anyway, so I think. Mark, it seems like we're having some connectivity issues on your end. Still there? Yeah. Are you still there? Seems like we are, we're having some issues with uh, Skype on your end, I think. All right, while well, we figure this out, I, I will uh, hop in and talk about the show real fast. Uh, no Surrender, solid. Uh, you're not going to see anything that would say would be, uh, uh, well, I would say I would say one. Uh, w there's one match there, and that's Moose and Alex Shelley. That was a hell of a match that they put on. Um, they did tremendous work. Um, but there was, like, like there, I don't think there was, aside from the PCO Con match, there was no bad wrestling. And the PCO Con match was deliberately done uh, to be a smaz, if you will. 
So Young uh, defeated uh, Kazarian. He's going to face Moose at the next uh, event at Sacrifice. Uh, ABC defeated Grizzled Vets, which I was very happy about. Because, again, I, I hate the idea of sign here, get title. <laughs> so I didn't want them to, to win it. And they're not even under contract. So that would have been doubly disappointed. PCO and Khan went to uh, DQ, probably setting up something at No Surrender. I'm hoping some type of big, crazy, crazy-ass match. That'd be fun. Um, let's see. Then we got uh, MK Ultra regained the knockout title by defeating Decay. Don't know why you had the title change in the first place at that point, but you know what? Hey, more power to you. Um, love them both. Can't wait to see what happens next there. Uh, Moose defeated uh, Shelly after Kushida threw in the towel for him. It was a hell of a match. It's on our contenders list for match of the year. Uh, Jordan Grace defeated Giselle Shaw in a pretty ho-hum match. And then uh, obviously Mustafa, Mustafa Ali defeated Saban in a pretty fun X-Division match. Um, not a fan of the guy as a star. Don't think he's going to be a needle mover. But it was a hell of a match. Real good match. I wouldn't say it was a match of the year in my opinion. But, you know, teach their own. Uh, Marcus, uh, are you back? No good? Yeah, it sounds like it. So, uh, any yeah. final thoughts on No Surrender, Marcus? I like it. I dug it. I mean, we rarely have ever had problems with uh, with the wrestling. You know, sometimes we question some of the stuff get booked, but, they, you know, the talent is, is, is uh, second to none, so... Um, yeah, obviously, you know, this was definitely the, the set a certain pace coming off of Hard to, hard to Kill, which was kind of the, the, the big reset. Uh, so I thought, I thought this, this was good, and I think it wasn't that sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I, I, dug it. I thought it was a solid show, a real solid show going. Looking forward to going back and watching it uh, in more in depth. But, uh, yeah, that you know, I never rarely felt without the talent. It's interesting with everything going on with the system. Um, got a few other things stirring on the thing. Um, the Giselle shop all was interesting because that like, Gail Kim kind of like set her up to get rid of her entourage finally. So, um, but hopefully that can kind of be the nail in this coffin because I, at this point, it's clear that they're just not going to commit to putting that title on. And why would you when you got somebody like Grace? Um, and maybe her time will come, but you know at this point we, we said it like Grace got. She got the keys right now, you know. So you you got to you got to let her drive the car, and uh, you know maybe she get knocked off down the line in a multi women's match or something like that. But right now, she is kind of like the real life juggernaut from X Men. She cannot be stopped. And apparently, the uh, No Surrender card will feature Jordan Grace versus Tasha Steele and Zaya Brookside in what at the moment looks to be a triple threat match. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, obviously, uh, Eric Young led a pre show talent meeting that seemed to go over pretty well with everyone, which goes hand in hand with some of the things that we're hearing about um, kind of the, the backstage of it all. Uh, no one seems to be on their way out. Uh, I know the Josh Alexander situation didn't really sit well with a lot of people, but I truly do believe that his contract would have been picked up, whether the more was in charge or not. Why wouldn't you? Um, I understand he wants to go and uh, look at free agency, but we've seen how that happens with this company, and likely that would have meant him leaving the company. So if his goal is to leave, that's fine. Um, use him to help get the next set of guys over. And I'm hoping, um, and we'll talk about this guy next. I think we'll, we'll rearrange the order. Uh, I'm hoping guys like Joe Hendry and Speedball and maybe even, you know, reestablishing Rich Swan, which they seem to be doing with what's his face. I'm hoping that's the direction they, they go. Um, if they lose Alexander, one of the best in ring guys I've seen in my life. Not a, not a great man event. Even if he re-signs, I'm not going to sit here and uh, change my mind on that. He's uh, he's not a character. He, he's very missable as, as, a, as a wrestler. And not as a wrestler, as, as a personality. His strengths are his ability to put on bangers that 
you'll never recover from. That That's what he uh, strives at. I, I want to see guys like Joe Hendry. I want to see guys like Moose. I want to see guys that have bigger personalities with that belt because personalities drive business. You know, Roman Reigns is a shit worker. He does six moves. And he, and you can say, well, you know, he's got... No, he hasn't. <laughs> he's been as dull as a in-ring guy from the start. He, he over-relies on two moves. It's what he does. But it works because people are crazily invested in him as a character. So... Yeah, which they never were before. Exactly, because he had a came, shit character. Yeah, which is why he came off as twice as annoying in the ring because, you yeah. know... Suffering suck at that, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, it seems like things are stabilized. So I'm glad we took the week that we did because I don't know, uh, I don't know if we would have had the same opinion last Tuesday. Yeah, and, and things could have went a different way. Like you said, the fact that they got, you know, I think Dream was really trusted. Uh, also, Gail Kim is is you know, same and and Ey one of the originals and, and, and probably somebody that was super, I would imagine. I mean, I was, a lot of people were close to, to, um, the more, but obviously EY was somebody that was, uh, would imagine a long time friend. And, uh, somebody that I would imagine is very, in a very difficult position to lose a friend like that in, in terms of how that happened. And uh, like we said, we don't, I don't know exactly who all figured out or got the news when or where or whatnot. Maybe Scott, told some people before it hit the fan, but um, that was a that's a difficult situation to be in. But I think somebody like Eric, who is, you know, a veteran at this point, both as a wrestler and certainly in that company, is also somebody who people can now trust to both, you know, it's kind of like when you have a, uh, feels like he could be like a, uh, when a director, when an actor becomes a director type of deal. Mm-hmm. The, the actors mm-hmm. are more comfortable because they, they you can relate to what's you know the actors have to go through when you know how to speak that language to be able to tell them what to do and how to do and make things go smoother. So uh, I'm glad things are leveled out like that, and hopefully, like you said, the momentum can go forward in terms of these personalities. Obviously, we talked about it before. I would like to see Gresham get back in the mix. I think that'll be a poor waste if you don't capitalize on that, particularly with his with his wife there and thriving like she is right now. Um, obviously, we always championing more Mike Bailey. Top situations. Glad to hear they're doing more with Swan. Um, getting Alexander back is is, is a, a good, certainly a good thing because the man's put on more bangers uh, than than most people across the industry in in, in his time there. So, um, but this guy Hendry man, like he is not missing with these these music videos. I've not. There ain't too many things I've enjoyed, maybe outside of all truth in terms of entertainment um, and wrestling, then I've enjoyed these, these uh, freaking videos. Like this last one he dropped on AJ. Like, you are banned from diving. <laughs> Go. When I thought the one he did on um, What's His Face was bad. Um, I forgot the, the name escapes me, but did this, this band from diving with the AJ music that was fantastic. <laughs> Jesus, that was a good. I'm, I, if they lose him, that'll be a huge loss. So, but they got to do some more because Joe Hendry can bang in the ring. But these music videos have been, oh man, like you got to put them next to the damn TNA funerals. These things are sick. I, w- I would, uh, yes, I would actually say that. Um, I think the first funeral was better than the second one, but the second funeral is still, I think, an all timer. And I would say that this one, the the Hendry Styles video, oh god, he did one when he first came in. Was it? Oh, it was Edge's bitches, I think. Yes, the, the, yes, that's what was it. Was it was it Ryder? Zach's not Ryder. I think it was Cardona. Cardona, yeah, Cardona. There it is. Oh man, it was fantastic. Oh, I loved it. So yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on there. Uh, so those are definitely all timers at the moment. Um, all right, we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, let's see if this is a good shot. Yeah. Uh, so Hammerstone reportedly uh, going to be showing up at Sacrifice as well. That makes me a happy boy. I think Hammerstone is the type of personality that the company needs. I think if you can lock him into a three-year deal, 
I think you have him build up to Moose at Slam Versa or Bound for Glory, and I think you make him the champion until he decides to leave the company. I think he's the kind of guy who can easily get you views, likes. He's he's a musician. He's got the type of look and the phonetic energy that makes people want to tune in. He's a hell of a hand in the ring. Not anything dynamic. Like, I would compare him a lot to Brian Cage in the ring. Um, maybe a little bit more mobile. Uh, but overall, yeah, I would say this is a huge get if they're able to land it. Marcus, I've been hyping up Hammerstone for years. Are you finally ready to embrace the Hammerstone? Hey, man. Like I, look, I take most of your recommendations, all of your recommendations, honestly, seriously. And also, I had, had peaked in MLW at time or two and, and, and seen him. But when he, and really, Alexander was probably the perfect person to, to pit him and get in terms of a showcase type of deal. Like, because, you know, at this point, Josh is almost like the Ishii of, of TNA. Um, like, he's that pillar that, you know, everybody kind of got to go stand up against, go through, and whatnot. When I seen this dude catch a, did, did he catch a chop in his neck? Mm-hmm. Between his neck and his his, his chest, like this is this is insane. So yeah, he is. Uh, he's beef. Yeah, guy, he's pure yeah, beef. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he is. Uh, is pure. Just he is a white Hulk. So it is. Uh, it's gonna be interesting seeing what they do. And uh, exactly, what, I like to see him running uh run a a, a little mini kaiju off with uh our boy Jake something. I'd like that, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, what's the best way to put it? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, he's the, the new Vanilla Gorilla. I'm about to say the great white ape. <laughs> he, he is, he's the new Vanilla Gorilla. Because uh, no one else had ever had that nickname before. No one. No one at all. Ever. Hey, do you, do you remember that great 60-minute classic Kurt Angle had on SmackDown where he had an Iron Man ma- match against himself? That was great. Oh man, they they <laughs> that they, they recently did a biography, those WWE biographies on A and E, they did one on Orton. And and the way they just smoothed through his world title thing. <laughs> his world title win. Uh, and I think they might have showed uh the former champion maybe like for two whole seconds. Not a name was mentioned, no type of inference is when the man they are kings of the persona and grotto when they want to be it's just wild how many wrestlemanias main evented with just single individuals doing nothing just just crazy but i will say that having wrestlemania 20 end with no one winning the belt wild wild just wild uh hammerstone's coming from mlw and he had a great run in MLW, just fantastic. Say what you will about MLW as a company. They they are the exact opposite of the NWA. They don't have stars, but they make stars. Unlike the NWA, who has stars and then loses them. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to see where Alex Kane ends up next. He, he's been fantastic with the company. And uh, while I'm not overly excited about uh, who is he facing off with now, uh, it's not Bobby, is it? No, it's, uh, yeah, it's Bobby Fish. I'm not overly excited about the Bobby Fish, Alex Kane of it all. Uh, I'll see how it plays out. I like Kane that much. That being said, MLW just got paid. The antitrust lawsuit that they had against the WWE has, has, has been going on for years. M- maybe years is a little bit hyperbolic. At least two, I would say. I think it started in 2022. Um, it, it centered around them getting kicked off of a network that was streaming also on Peacock, and because WWE had a deal with Peacock, they got Peacock to kill the deal with MLW. That's illegal, and now they got paid $20 million from the WWE. This is going to be huge in the investment of MLW's future. Uh, I can't wait to see how they benefit from it, and it just proves to you that sometimes the good guys do win. Uh, Marcus, are you kind of surprised that the WWE settled not really. They they in a whole new wave of, of, of uh, let's say leadership now, um, and with certain stuff still on the horizon, storms brewing, they don't got time for things that I would imagine with the size that they are and continuing to grow. 
have time for something that they probably deem petty. So you probably wanted to just go ahead and give them the money, which at this point may very well be chump change. How much did they get? Twenty million. Yeah, that might be chump change. I mean, they did making money hand over fist. Uh, that, that and that's probably putting it lightly. So they probably just look at that. It's maybe not even a loss. Just like get them twenty million, and we'll make that back. And you know, a week's time, maybe a day, depending on how things are flowing. And uh, just kind of get it off the docket. Uh, but it is good to see that, uh, like you said, the little guy get the win because they that company has done some real shady crap over the years, and, and they they need to get, be called out and, and got for. And I guess this is a <laughs> a way that they got got, so to speak. But I, you know, it's a great win for MLW because of the position they in. But you know, um, I don't know how much twenty million. Um, it's, 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 by no means crippling WWE. No. So that takes us to, ironically, our last story. Uh, short show today. Though if we have anything else that pops up, we, we will absolutely cover that too. Um, Mark, I don't know if you looked up this image yet. It's 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 the most cursed thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, Tets, Tetsuya Naito taking on show in... Uh, the 52nd anniversary anniversary event. It's the worst fucking photo I've ever seen in my life. Like, Mark, I, 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 implore, I, I implore you. Look this up. It's, it's, it's terrible. Um, let's start with the card. Uh, it's going to not be good. I thought the, I, I think it was, uh, uh, what 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 are the names? Uh, per Peruso Western or something like that. They weren't too happy about it. Uh, I I thought they were being a little bit overly dramatic. They weren't. Uh, the sh- show's gonna open up with Tomaki Hanma and Tangalo taking on the United Empires. Great Okan and Jeff Cobb. Uh, Gorillas Destiny Hikaleo and El Fantasmo are gonna take on the TMDK combo of Mikey Nichols and Zack Saber Jr. El Desperado. Tomoro, Ishii, Hiroki Goto, and Tanro, Hiroshi Tanahashi will take on Bushi, Shingo Takagi, Yota, uh, Yota Ushi, sorry, uh, and Hiromu Takahashi. Uh, the other part of United Empire, Colin Newman, Francisco Kira, and TJP ugh, are taking on Bullet Club War Dogs, Ghetto, Gabe Kidd, and David Finley. That's not, that's not great. Chess Five Guys, Doki, Yuya, Yuamura, Taichi, and Sonata taking on the House of Torture, Dick Togo, Yoshinobu, Tano, uh, Kanemaru, Ren Narita, and the Evil. Then we have four singles matches, uh, three of which are New Japan 2024 Tournament World Cup first round matches. Toro Yano will take on uh, Yujihiro Takahashi. Yoshihashi will take on Kenta. And Shota Umino will take on Jack Perry. And then in the main event... It's going to be champion versus champion anniversary match. It's Tetsuya Naito versus Sho. And I, I, I never want to see this image of Sho again, truth be told. It is it is not good. Yeah, that's it, Marcus. That's it. That's the cursed image. I don't want to say what Sho is looking like he's doing. But you, you can put two and two together. <laughs> And then we find out that they're going to do another rush hour. He looks like Lee's long lost on <laughs> That'll be the villain or something. Uh, oh, man. Are you disappointed with this card? Because I'm sure you're going to cover it for the uh, your other podcast, the True Penny Show. Um, Actually, I'm, I'm kind of off the New Japan beating. It's kind of been exclusively covering Glee. Um, well, let's see. Naito Show. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Um, who the hell is is that? Tanahashi going against Jack Perry? No, uh, Tanahashi is going against Jack Perry's going against Shota Umino. Okay, that's okay. All right, that's why <laughs> we, we don't believe that all Japanese people look the same. We just believe that those two Japanese people look the same. Yeah, yeah, and somebody's. And it'd be interesting when some, some of these guys go from black to blonde. It's almost like Clark Kent, Superman, it's that whole thing. But uh, so okay. thoughts on the card? Strong? Not strong? Uh, 
mid mid the only I guess match I'll be looking forward to uh, I guess see what potentially what Jack is doing differently now in New Japan and it wasn't doing in, in AEW and you know, geez the way Show's looking at this thing like he just might shoot <laughs> a bomb night or um but this match between um, Kenta and Yoshihashi, I think probably the one I look forward to most. But uh, other than that, the, the cards mid. I can't even, I can't even take a match seriously between <laughs> you, Jiro, and, and 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 Yano. Like, what are you? What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> excited about the Tanahashi era so far. Apparently, he's going to be putting himself back into upper competition. He's set to face off with Dolph Ziggler for the global title or whatever it is. Uh, I doubt he'll win it, but they're clearly they're clearly investing in both a very too young and very too old movement at the same time, which is not great. So. Um, Tom Tonga is apparently going to be joining the WWE. That'll be interesting, to say the least. Uh, Julia, I think is how we pronounce her name. G- Gialia. <laughs> He's from uh, Stardom. I've never heard anyone pronounce her name before. I, I don't watch a lot of Japanese wrestling with the sound on. Unless it has English commentary, I don't really care. But but you know who I'm talking about, right? Yo, no, absolutely. She's uh, She's stunning. I've been seeing a lot of pictures around uh, Golden Hut. She's coming in as well. Apparently, if she is signing with the WWE, which all points say yes, uh, she will leave stardom at the end of this month. I think she's a free agent come March. Yeah, um, but that time of time that sounded interesting because um, <laughs> I guess how many cousins is he removed from The Rock? I mean, quite a bit. Is he part um, of the family though? I, he's he's Haku's adopted son. I didn't think mm-hmm. Haku was a part of the dynasty though. I thought he was Haku's actual son. Okay, I didn't know that. No, I'm pretty sure Tamatanga was was adopted. Not that it matters. Yeah, but uh, that that's gonna be interesting seeing what they they slot him in. Um, Uh, apparently, Tomatonga is the actual cousin, or the, I shouldn't say actual, that was rude of me, is the biological cousin of Bad Luck Fale. Oh. So, Bad Luck Fale is biologically related to Tomatonga, who was adopted by uh, Haku. Now, where does Haku land in all this? Because he's, he's a Fafita, he's not a, he's not a Nanawai. Oh, okay. Now, he... It, Again, like it, it, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot to that family, so he might be, <laughs> right? I feel like this is something like I don't know if you've seen that uh that that uh, social media for for that 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 school with those uh, kids that got a wrestling club. I feel like this will be something for them to do, like break down of the difference. <laughs> it's like they, the Anawaiis, and then it's the like the name you said. Cause that that's a, that Jesus that's fine. They put the family tree up on that uh, on the Tron at that press conference for WrestleMania. I was like, wow, that's that's more than half this family has worked in this company. Uh, God knows how many years. The literal family business. The memes though that came out of that, <laughs> wonderful, glorious. All right, um, Tanahashi uh, saying that it's a star-making business. We need to make new ones. Agreed. Uh, Ole Anderson passed away. That's unfortunate. Uh, though he was in his eighties, so was like, I don't want to. I don't want to pretend that it was tragic. You know, we all got to go sometime, and he had a long one. So that's good. Um, Elimination Chamber was this past Sunday. I don't care about what happened. Apparently, it's going to be Drew McIntyre versus uh, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. That seems lame. 
but they won't give us the match we all want. Dom versus The Rock. <laughs> Could you imagine Dominic Mysterio against The Rock? Ah, I would love it. It'd be, it'd be a shit show. Yeah, I mean, look, he uh <laughs> stepped up to Gunther last night. <laughs> and, and Rhea Ripley was like, really, bro? Like, Gunther? <laughs> of all people, but she was backstage, she was like, Gunther, really? He's like, I got a plan. I'm like, what? Oh, damn, ain't no plan. Is that pl- it, plan is one step or it's two steps? Step one, challenge Gunther. Step two, die. <laughs> like step three, your relationship is over because you won't be able to do nothing physically anymore because you'll be freaking dead. Oh, uh, but yeah. Oh, Sean Spears is back in NXT. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Is he? Was he the face? What was it? Was that who he is? The the faces of man or whatever. I, I do not. I have no idea. I just know that he attacked Ridge Holland, who was the guy that uh, took out Big E. Uh, uh, so one, it sucks that Big E is still out. Two, it sucks that Ridge Holland is only known for that. Yeah, Big E's a good man. Like he, that dude. That dude was like, I don't blame him. Shit happens. I hope Big E is able to come back. I just more than anything, I hope he has a good life. Yeah, man, and it's it's crazy too because I've heard other people talk about like he's such a great personality that there's so many other spots the company can put him in, but I don't know if he necessarily would want to do that because it's like is it one of those things where it's like it's too close for comfort? Like can he be that close to it and instant you know, uh, not getting his feelings about it? I just feel like you could you could you could saddle him anywhere and his personality will shine like they do with Truth, but mm-hmm. you know hopefully. Mm-hmm. You know, we we've seen so many crazy comebacks. I mean, the fact that Orton at that uh that chamber I guess press conference that uh Perk was like he has more metal in his back now coming off of that surgery than there is in the whole elimination chamber. I'm like, that is insane. So, um, yeah. We'll see. Um Let's see, there was one more thing. Oh, yeah, so the main event for, or the main events for WrestleMania have been solidified. Uh, w- one of these four matches will headline night one, and then the other three will likely headline night two. Reigns versus Cody, uh, Io Sky versus Bailey. Bailey's lost a step. I don't think she's as good as she used to be. I would not main event with that. Ray Ripley and Becky Lynch, I think, is the most prominent women's match that has ever been booked for WrestleMania. Like, I think the Ronda Charlotte Becky match wasn't nearly as excited or, or people were excited for it as much as people wanted to re- revisit. I think this match would genuinely have huge, absolutely huge fan support, especially with how over Ray Ripley is. And then Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre, which is snooze fest, bore. No, thank you. Otherwise, yeah. Um,. Marcus, uh, any final thoughts on anything before we 22 skidoo? Oh, no. Like you said, uh, R.I.P. Ole uh, Anderson. I uh, saw that. Like, I think, think TNA sh- shot out something about that as well. But, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, no, I'm glad everything's kind of, like you said, for the most part, settled with, uh, with, with TNA. Um, and, uh, I guess coming up, you may very well be checking out against your better judgment something with AEW because it's it's the OG's upcoming final match. Mm-hmm. So you know that 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 sucks. Uh, and you know, sending well wishes and good energy to Sting, who I think he, he said in the recent promo he just lost his dad, so it's a lot a lot of emotions I would imagine swirling right now. But uh, yeah, man, it's gonna be the end of an era for real. So. Uh, before we sign off, I will say uh, the idea of his sons not wanting to wrestle, I think, is a goddamn travesty. <laughs> Get those boys in the ring. Yeah, I mean, they, they're basically Steve Borden variants. Yeah. You got <laughs> Crow Sting and Surfer Sting right there. Just go. Just go. Like, they <sighs> both, like, you got two good, like, spit image sons, and they both look like they're in hella good shape. And the fact that they had to sell to the Stucks. Yeah, of all people. All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, wrestling website is realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-R-P.com. Twitter is N-E-R-D-C-R-P. You can find Marcus on his personal account. It is Paradox Kid, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-K-I-D. 
That's me. You can also find him on, on his other podcast, The True Penny Show, T R U E P E N N Y S H O W S H O W. That's The True Penny Show. Uh, you can check out and find all their links to their uh, past episodes on their Twitter account. You can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C H D N E R D C R P, and on the Instagram at Chad's Photo at C H E D S P H O T O H U T. We're done for this week. We'll be back next Tuesday for another edition of the Wrestling Underground podcast uh, on twitch.tv backslash Wrestling Underground. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. Remember, always watch more wrestling. And Marcus, take us home. Good night.